Hello everyone. My name is Petrusia Węgrzynowicz and today I'm going to tell you about some issues with security of JSON Web Tokens. Briefly about myself. I've been doing professional software development for over 20 years. Uh, I've always been close to code and I'm still trying to keep that way. Uh, my interest focus on patterns and anti-patterns in software. Um, along the way, how to improve software quality. I work on tools for automated software uh, detection and refactoring of various software defects uh, related to security, performance, uh, and databases. So basically, security vulner vulnerabilities are my daily job. What am I going to talk about today? First, a brief introduction to JSON Web Tokens, just for all of us to be on the same pay and page and when it comes to basic knowledge and uh, terminology. The key part of the talk uh, involves four demos that reveal some security problems with the spec, the implementation of token libraries, and some problems with our applications. And there are a number of caveats uh, which concern uh, JSON Web Tokens. And we'll start with uh, the first difficult, difficult thing about JSON Web Tokens, how to pronounce it. Um, because uh, I've heard various pronunciations like JWT, as a Polish native speaker, I pronounce it as uh, JWT. Uh, but the correct way is Chat. Let's take a look at the spec. The suggested pronunciation is like an uh, English word chat. Uh, I will do my best to pronounce it correctly, to be conformant to the spec. And uh, when we are at the spec, let's take a look at the definition. It's quite a lengthy one. Uh, to cut it short, we usually use JOTS to rep rep represent a self-contained session of the authenticated user and his or her roles. Uh, it's, a it's a set of claims uh, that encode users, usually encode users' identity and users' permission. Plus, uh, JOTS are digita digitally signed to protect their content. That's an example of uh, JSON Web Token. Uh, we see a lot of letters, some numbers, and occasional dots. When we take a closer look at uh, charts, uh, it turns out it consists of three parts uh, separated by two dots. And uh, how can we decode it? It turns out that uh, JSON Web Token is simply base 40, uh, 64 URL encoded. So each part is encoded separately. When we decode it, uh, we can see plain text of a header, payload, and signature. Signature usually is not very readable because it's uh, usually binary content. But uh, header and payload are pretty simple to, uh, to read. So in, in the header, we usually see algorithm, which is used to digitally sign uh, a token. And uh, in the payload, we see a uh, subject, that's a must, and some other claims like, uh, for example, issued at uh, the time when the, the token has been issued, uh, issuer who issued the token and expiration time or how long the token will be valid. Uh, so those are the basics. And now let's move uh, to the, our first demo. Uh, the first demo involves uh, the algorithm none. I'm not sure whether you've heard about uh, 
this algorithm, but basically the spec says that two algorithms should, must be implemented by a library. One is none, and the other is HS256. So this is a very important algorithm as by the spec. And what does it mean? It means that it's not signed at all. How can we uh, exploit it? I will show you. I will show you uh, a demo I have prepared. I will post the link on Twitter. I would like you um, to log in, uh, basically first to register in the application. So, okay, my Twitter is Yon Labs. Um, I'm sending uh, the link to the demo. I've already have my own account. I will log in. This application uses uh, JATS for session management. Uh, let's take a look how it looks like in this case. Um, okay, so please register because I see that nobody, oh, I see two person registering. That's great. I'm waiting for more. And let's take a look at, uh, at developers tools. And we'll take a look at the storage. Because usually on the client side, we store our tokens in session storage. And we see here the token for my demo application. So basically, I would like to copy um, to copy the token, and I will try to decode it just to take a look at the structure. Uh, I will use this website; it's very useful in case of uh, quick checking and decoding. Uh, we see that the algorithm use is HS256, uh, 256, and the subject is uh, mysterious one. I guess it's a user ID. So I will try to generate a token with non algorithm and some other user ID, and we'll see whether I, uh, I succeed. OK, let's take a look how many. Oh, I see quite a lot of people registered. Um, I've already prepared um, a token. With ID7, I will show you that non token. So basically, that's it. Algorithm non. Subject, uh, that means user ID 7, and there is no signature. You see there is uh, an empty string at the end. So I will try to use this token and replace my valid token with this artificial one. I just refresh the page, and yes. I've got the session of Zuzu. Is he or she on in the room? Zuzu, oh, yeah. So congratulations, you've been hijacked. So thank you for your cooperation. Uh, you see, that's, uh, that's a huge problem, right? Uh, we trust our libraries, and it turns out that we shouldn't do that. Of course, it depends on the library. Uh, here I've used IO JSON Web uh, token, and it turns out it has a problem with API. 
I will show you the code. Um, so the code is, uh, is here, that's uh, my verification function. I use IO JSON web token, I simply set signing key to my secret key, and I perform pass. Then I uh, check the claims, and uh, if uh, no exception is thrown, I assume it's fine. Uh, and the problem is with the API, because uh, this library has two functions, or even more, two public functions. It has parse, and the other one is parse claims uh, J, uh, JWS. Uh, so the other one checks whether or not the token has been signed. This one doesn't uh, uh, allows for none. Uh, tokens, those unsecured uh, tokens. So that's the problem. And actually, uh, I found this problem during uh, code audits and pen testing um, of uh, real world applications. So it happens in real world as well. So check your application whether they are vulnerable or not. Um, so uh, this is a problem with the spec. It allows uh, for non-algorithm. Um, it was uh, an assumption that after the token has been validated, you can use those unsecured tokens. Um, so that was the assumption uh, of the spec writers. However, it turns out that you face the public, public uh, uh, internet, uh, it's not that safe anymore. Uh, so you need to put a lot of attention to make your code secure. Uh, plus, uh, another problem is uh, clean API of the library. Uh, okay, the sample uh, on the web page is fine because it shows the example of parse claims uh, signed. Uh, however, I found on some uh, open source projects that uh, uh, the authors use the, this parse function, which is uh, insecure when it comes to non-algorithm. So those are two problems. Plus, uh, this is the problem of uh, uh, us developers, because we need to put a lot of attention and a lot of knowledge to find the right way to implement uh, our security mechanisms. Uh, another problem, uh, another library which uh, uh, had the same problem, uh, you see here uh, a security issue uh, uh, from National Vulnerability Database, that's the perfect source to uh, check out your libraries and find out whether or not they have some vulnerabilities. So I recommend, I highly recommend uh, uh, for all of you to go and check uh, your, your libraries. Uh, because you see, uh, this vulnerability has been discovered in uh, only just uh, last year. So it's pretty fresh. Uh, there are more libraries which have uh, API problem. Um, this one has this issue with parse versus parse claims uh, secure. Uh, another library uh, provides the functions, the code, and verify. The code uh, just uh, simply uh, does uh, base uh, 64 decoding and verify, uh, only verify verifies fully signature. So uh, if you are new to a library, um, you use the first uh, function which fits your purposes, and it must be a wrong one. It might be a wrong one. Uh, the best practices in this case include that we, during the verification step, we should require um, a specific algorithm and a specific key. Obviously, we should understand our JAT libraries and check out uh, National Vulnerability Database to f discover potential vulnerabilities in uh, tools we are using. 
uh, why to require a specific algorithm key? Because this is not the only problem with the libraries. Uh, here you see another example of uh, security vulnerability from National Vulnerability, vulnerability Database. Um, it turns out that one library um, accepted uh, tokens. Normally, uh, this uh, library allowed for RSA tokens signed with private key and verified with uh, public key. However, uh, a hacker could provide a uh, crafted token, which uh, has been signed with HMAC SHA algorithm, uh, but with uh, use, uh, using uh, public RSA key. Uh, usually, public keys can, uh, are less protected and can be available to hackers. So a hacker tried to uh, trick library to use a different algorithm during verification, but the key which has been configured uh, on the server side. Uh, so uh, only the verification of the algorithm and the key could protect against such problems. Mm. And uh, another algorithm uh, and key problem uh, from the security uh, database and uh, uh, from last year, uh, it turns out that the spec of JATS allows to provide a key in the header. So basically, a hacker could uh, generate own key, assign with this key the token, and provide a key uh, to the library, uh, to the server side in the header. And it turns out that there was a library, Node.js library, which allowed for uh, such an attack scenario. But basically, uh, take a look at this uh, piece of text. Uh, the vulnerability, vulnerability is due to following the spec. So yeah, the spec is not always the best thing to follow. OK, uh, so I've mentioned that the spec requires two algorithms that must be implemented by libraries, uh, none and HS256. So let's take a look at HS256. Uh, it turns out that um, our tokens um, our tokens uh, use uh, exactly this algorithm. I relog just to generate a new token because I would like to crack it. Um, okay, so there are a lot, maybe not a lot, but there are a few libraries, good password crackers, or they call themselves uh, password recovery tools. Uh, okay, so I will, use, I will use one of those password recovery tools, Hashcat. Hashcat is a very fine tool because it uses GPUs. So uh, using GPU, we can crack uh, the password very, very quickly. If you have a couple of very high performance GPUs, uh, you can achieve like uh, a couple of billions hashes per second. So that's a huge number. Of course, my computer is not that fast, so uh, I use slightly weaker password. Um, and OK. Uh, we will see how long it takes to crack this password. Uh, okay, it's still waiting. Uh, but basically, you see that on my computer and my GPU, which is not the best, uh, it takes like uh, 5 million hashes per second. Uh, and uh, when we recover, the secret key, uh, 
we can use it just to sign a new token and to impersonate another user, right? And take a look, that this is simple brute force attack. Oh, it happened already. So yeah, the password is pretty obvious, DevOps. Uh, we'll try to use it in a moment. Uh, so basically, when you perform, this was a very simple configuration with brute force attack. And take into account that in case of uh, JSON web tokens, we don't need to connect to external server. We do it totally offline. So we need only one token, and we can experiment uh, with this token on our machines. We don't warn the server side. We don't connect to the server side. In case of password uh, cracking, we need to connect to the, uh, to the server side. Right? In this case, we don't need to. So it's pretty comfortable. So the password is uh, DevOps. So again, I will use this chat IO library uh, page. OK, I will change the algorithm to HS256. Now I will impersonate user 13. And I will provide the secret because I know it now. This should generate a perfectly valid token which will be accepted by the server side. We will see in a moment. OK. Now to refresh. Yep, very readable test user. Who is that? Is the test user on the site? OK, I guess that. Oh, it was one of the first users. No, oh, there are a lot of test users. OK. Uh, so basically, you see that we, if we discover the secret, we can do anything what, uh, what we want. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, you see that uh, on my computer, even on my computer, it was pretty uh, performant. Uh, if you have a desktop computer with a really fine GPU, it would be really very, very fast. Um, so the problem here was that we used quite weak key. It was only six uh, characters long. Um, but the problem also is that uh, all those algorithms are pretty complicated. There are many algorithms, different kinds of keys. So when we, as developers, uh, uh, for the first time, we try to implement charts, we simply go for the simplest solution, right? We find some uh, example on the net, we try to make it working, and we don't have much time to think about security. And actually, we, we should be at least familiar with basic algorithms and their properties. So uh, for chats, we have four families of algorithms, HMAC with, with SHA, uh, uh, RSA with SHA and uh, elliptic curves and uh, probabilistic signature schema, both with SHA. Uh, those two last algorithms are not uh, supported in JDK. You need to use an external provider like Bouncy Castle to use them. Uh, however, both of them are pretty uh, good when it, uh, when, when it comes to uh, cryptography. 
So let's start with uh, Hmax with SHA. Uh, the key property of this algorithm is that it requires a shared key. So this is a symmetric algorithm. When we discover this key, uh, it can be used by a hacker to forge and to prepare totally mm, different tokens. Uh, so when it comes to key sizes, as a, as a rule of thumb, we should uh, pick a shared key as long as the length of the hash. So for HS256, it should be at least uh, 32 bytes minimum. So my six characters was definitely too short. Um, on the other hand, when you are when you are uh, choosing this algorithm for your system, uh, you should be about uh, you should be aware about scalability. Why? Uh, because uh, in terms of scalability, you have many machines. Uh, each of them must verify tokens, so each of them must uh, uh, store the secret shared key, right? And this is just a larger attack surface. Because one server compromised means that the entire system is compromised. So, uh, you, uh, you could think about uh, asymmetric algorithms like RSA. Um, so with asymmetric algorithms, you have like public and private keys. Uh, authentication server or servers use a private key and verification servers or others uh, can use only public keys. So it's much better when it comes to uh, large infrastructure and uh, single point of security fail failure. However, uh, the verification is uh, slightly slower, especially the longer key you have, the slower verification. And f the key sizes recommended for RSA is at least 2K bits, 2K bits. Um, okay, so let's move to our third demo. It's a packet sniffing. Um, okay, so I will, once again, I will need your help. First I will, uh, okay, that's my remote session. Okay, so I'm, now I'm on the external server. I will run TCP dump. TCP dump just allows to sniff all TCP traffic. Uh, I've configured my TCP dump to uh, to just uh, capture the request coming to the port 80, and plus I uh, I've added uh, filtering uh, by bearer just to capture my uh, to capture yours, not mine tokens. Okay, so, uh, oh, I, I was about to ask you uh, to refresh the pages and I see that uh, tokens are coming and pretty fast. Okay, <laughs> oh, moment, I need to, okay, I need to stop my TCP down because I need to, uh, I need to copy one of those tokens. Okay, I have a lot of them, plenty to choose from. Um, and okay, so again, it's a pretty, now I'm Antoine. Antoine, are you, oh, you are over there, thank you. <laughs> You are very lucky to be picked from so many tokens. <laughs> uh, 
so you see how easy it is to hijack the user session while you have access to tokens, right? Uh, nothing can stop you. Um, so the problem here was obviously lack of encryption. So you can argue that uh, if we use HTTPS, that wouldn't happen. No, I, I would not uh, be allowed to, to sniff your packets. Um, however, think about all those uh, vulnerabilities in OpenSSL, TLS, etc. So HTTPS is not uh, that secure uh, as well. Uh, however, it's getting better, of course. And the other problem is token site jacking. Uh, stolen tokens can be freely used. Uh, the hacker can simply use a replay attack and uh, we can't do anything, right? Uh, so, the, uh, and think about your expiration times. Uh, if you have like a very long expiration times, like a couple of hours or, a, or even worse, a couple of days or, a, or 30 days, that's a long time span during which a hacker can reuse the stolen tokens and replay them with any requests comes to in any requests come to their uh, to their minds. Um, okay, so now we can switch to HTTPS, and I will show you uh, XSS uh, to steal token. So basically, this application is also available over HTTPS. So let's switch to HTTPS version. Okay. I can log in. And you see here that, uh, oh yeah, someone, uh, found out my uh, password. Lucky you, I was, uh, I was uh, thinking whether or not anyone will find that out. The password was very, very simple, password. As simple as that. So uh, I was pretty sure that one of you will uh, try that out. So uh, Marlock, are you here? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Good job. Yeah, Marlock is here, but I will, uh, I will update that. I will update that with, uh, with that attack. I will show you the full uh, line. So basically, uh, this line, uh, this field is vulnerable, vulnerable to XSS. How can I check that? I will simply write something like that. Uh, ah, yep. Thank you. It's difficult to... Look at the other monitor. Okay, now, no, it's not the... <laughs> okay, I, uh, wait a moment. Uh, yeah, that's the most difficult part of my demo. <laughs> Writing it collect correctly, okay. No, not okay, because I've forgotten, yeah. <laughs> Uh, password cracking was a piece of cake, and this one is like, ah, oh. okay. Um, I will refresh that, and when you click my page, you see that there is XSS here. Okay, so now when we know that we have an XSS, uh, 
we will try to be more malicious than with a simple alert. alert. Uh, we will try to store the to uh, to steal the token and send it to our evil server. I've prepared. I've prepared a simple servlet on my evil server, which just logs down all stolen tokens. But again, I need your cooperation. So you need to unfortunately click my page. Okay. Uh, and in the meantime, I will observe the logs on my server. Okay, the tokens are coming. I'm so happy. And again, at the very high speed rate. Thank you. So, we will try this one. Okay, got it. And... We'll see who will be this lucky girl or guy. And refresh. And we have Steven. Steven, you are very close. Thank you for your cooperation. Without you, my demos would be a failure. So you see, even if we use HTTPS and uh, if we have an XSS in our application, basically our application is exposed to hackers. All users can be impersonated. Uh, if you take a look uh, at our attack vector, uh, this attack vector is pretty simple and common. Uh, it can be used as well with uh, cookies. Um, basically, we have only one trick here. We load our evil URL into image source. Why? Uh, to bypass same origin policy because uh, um, the browsers will not allow to connect to the external servers. Uh, only they allow for this in, uh, for images to be loaded from other domains uh, or scripts. There are some. There are some exceptions. Other exceptions as well. Uh, so basically, that was uh, it, and uh, uh, we needed to prepare external server when we will where, where we will store our stolen tokens and and that's it so the problem here is that uh, we have an xss and uh, uh, we have uh, no way to block access to session storage for javascript for cookies, I guess that you know that we can mark cookies with flags like uh, HTTP only, which blocks those cookies from being accessed uh, from JavaScript. So cookies uh, secured that way will not be uh, stolen via XSS. Uh, in case of session storage, there is no such a mechanism. Uh, session storage must be available to JavaScript, so there is no way to block uh, access to session storage. So how can we approach this problem? Uh, in terms of XSS, fortunately we have modern web frameworks and usually they take good care of uh, XSS. Uh, unfortunately, you again must know what you are doing because I use in my demo application, I use Angular. And uh, Angular has really very good contextual uh, escaping 
of untrusted data. Uh, but uh, in case of such things like you want for a user to configure their web page, uh, you must bypass those security sanitization and escaping. So uh, you see that uh, you must uh, um, uh, you must implement some other solution to uh, validate those potentially vulnerable fields. So good library and smart usage plus good server configuration. Uh, in terms of this XSS, it would be very helpful to configure a good content security policy, which basically will block any connection to external domain names. So even though we will have XSS, we will not be able, as hackers, we will not be able to send uh, those uh, um, tokens to uh, our servers, to the evil servers. Uh, on the other hand, you can think about hearts and cookies as a storage mechanism for JATs. Uh, so it's only a storage mechanism, uh, so it's not uh, being uh, stateful. Uh, no server-side state, we just only store our tokens instead of station storage, we store them in a cookie with uh, flags like secure, HTTP only, and same site. But again, when we use cookies, we, uh, we will go back to the CSRF problem, cross-site request forgery. The same sign, some, uh, in some way, protects us against uh, CSRF, but again, we need to, in case of uh, tokens stored in cookies, we need to take care of CS, CS, uh, CSRF. Uh, another approach is recommended by OWASP. OWASP stands so, for Open Web Application Security Project. It's, it's a non-for-profit organization uh, which aims at uh, increasing security awareness among uh, software developers. They have a lot of good uh, uh, security guides, guides, cheat sheets, uh, and tools. So I highly recommend their uh, web page. And uh, their, their approach to token site jacking is to use fingerprinting. Uh, what is it? What is that? We generate a random secure value. We hash it and add it to, as a claim to our token. And raw value of the secure random uh, uh, value we set as a hardened cookie. So we, uh, we send it through two channels. One channel involves token itself, and the other channel involves cookie. And uh, on the during the verification step, we verify whether or not token itself is valid. Uh, and we verify the, uh, the cookie value, hashed cookie value, with the claim from our valid token. If those two values match, that's fine. If they don't, uh, we have a problem and probably, uh, and for sure it's some sort of an attack on our application, so we can safely reject that request. Uh, and in terms of basic hygiene, that's pretty difficult with chats. Why? Uh, because we, ha we don't have any built-in mechanisms for uh, token revocation. So, uh, and that's a basic uh, hygiene from the security point of view, that a user uh, must be able to explicitly stop his or her session. He, he can just log out and he can be guaranteed that's all. Nobody will use 
that session anymore. With tokens, it's pretty difficult. Plus, uh, timeouts. Usually, when we go for cookie-based server-side uh, session management, we have a uh, built-in feature of inactivity timeout. With tokens, uh, we don't have such a feature, right? We have a fixed expiration time, and that's it. That's why we usually go for a long-term, uh, long-lived tokens um, to avoid relogging. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it's not very secure because it increases uh, attack time span, potential attack time span. So, how to approach logouts? <laughs> The state strikes back. We need a state on the server side. Uh, we, we need some sort of a store to store uh, invalidated tokens. Uh, there is no other way. We can use like very short-lived tokens, but it's and uh, access token, refresh tokens, but it's pretty complicated. Uh, so the best approach is to just have a state on the server side. So unfortunately, it's not that easy with a stateless approach. And when it comes to timeouts, uh, we should definitely use shorter token expiration time times and we can accept relogging or we can go for an approach with uh, refreshing access tokens. So uh, basically, what you've seen here is just a tip of the iceberg. So uh, you need to be very careful in implementation of your uh, JSON web tokens uh, because a fool with a tool is only a fool, right? We developers can't be fools. We need to know what we are doing, uh, which tool is right for a given job and how to use it wisely. And nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. All we can do is to improve ourselves as developers. So that's continuous learning, right? Uh, in software development, we have continuous integration. We have uh, continuous delivery. I often talk about continuous refactoring. Uh, but the fundamental paradigm is continuous learning. So let's keep educating ourselves. And I hope that you have enjoyed my presentation. Thank you for your cooperation. And uh, now it's time for your questions. We have like two minutes left, or you can approach me during the break. I will be happy to discuss your problems, my problems with J JSON Web Tokens. Thank you.